We're glad you have tuned us back in this evening for worship at First Baptist Church, and we want you to sing along with us, with us and praise the Lord and just enjoy a time together, even though most of us are, are at home, but uh, we're, we're thankful that you've tuned us in this evening. Let's pray together before we uh, praise the Lord in song. Father, we're thankful for the day that you've given us, Lord, and for uh, the time of worship this morning, and uh, Lord, we do pray that you just work in our hearts, Father, uh, in our minds, Father, to, uh, to uh, be that witness and testimony, uh, Lord, that you'd have us to be. Father, we do uh, look forward to that time when we can be together in a couple of weeks and pray that you would just uh, uh, work in the hearts and lives of your people, Lord, and uh, we do uh, pray that you lead and guide us as we uh, try to be safe in, in, in doing all of these things. And, Lord, we, uh, uh, we just uh, want to be back together and to give you praise and honor and glory, for only you are worthy of all glory and honor and praise. Father, we uh, thank you for all the many blessings of life and, uh, Lord, for uh, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Lord. We, uh, we just praise you, Father, for, for who you are and all that you've done for us. Uh, Lord, we uh, thank you for uh, our families and uh, thank you for the love that we share with one another. And, uh, Lord, we just, uh, again, look forward uh, to being uh, back together again and to, uh, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we pray for all of our sister churches in our county and uh, neighborhoods, Lord, as uh, they seek to, to do your will and uh, to, to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and, Father, whatever means have been given them. And I know many churches have been online and we've enjoyed and been blessed by listening to their services. And so, Lord, I just pray that you continue to bless all of those that uh, seek to, to give witness and testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and, uh, Father, to seek out those that are lost in, uh, in this world today, Father. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you bless our time together this evening. Uh, Lord, that uh, your, the name of Jesus would be uh, lifted high. And uh, Lord, we just uh, seek to honor you today. Again, thank you, Father, for all the many blessings that you've given us. and uh, Keep us safe in the palm of your hand. And we give you praise and honor and glory for it all. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. And amen. Okay, we're going to sing together, Sweeter Than the Day Before. Well, good evening. We're glad that you've decided to join us here at First Baptist Church of Oneida for our evening worship hour. And a couple of announcements that I need to make to you. One is to remember on the 14th of June, and Brother Robbie will come in a moment and remind you, uh, but also on the 31st of May, we will be gathering as a church for the first time in a few weeks. And uh, we do have the pews marked off for you uh, where you'll know there's six feet of social distancing. And also, if you want to wear a mask, please feel free to do so. And uh, also remember, on June the 7th, we will be honoring our seniors 
Now, if you would, please call the church office and let Teresa know uh, if you have a senior that's graduated from high school or college. Uh, we want to know about that so we can recognize them. And uh, if they graduated from uh, Rome State, we just want to know uh, their accomplishment in life. And it is a great milestone in these people's lives, and we just want to lift them up and honor them. So we need your help. We do not want to forget anybody. We don't want to leave anybody out, and so we need your help, so please call. Uh, remember, on the 31st, we won't have Sunday school. Church will be at 11. We will not have an evening service uh, that week or for a couple more weeks at least uh, as we continue to go through the second phase. I saw where the second phase will begin in Tennessee on May the 28th, so we're starting in with the second phase, and I think the third phase is supposed to be the 1st of July. So let's continue to pray that all will go well and we won't have any setbacks. Brother Robbie, at this time, if you'll come, representing the pastor's search committee. Well, good evening and uh, thank you. Just a quick update for our service on June the 14th. Um, due, to con due to concerns with COVID-19, we have reconsidered what that day will kind of look like. Uh, so on June the 14th in the morning service, uh, it would be an abbreviated music service. Then the candidate will come and bring the message along with his testimony. Uh, and there will be a short time at the end of the service for question and answer. And we will vote that morning uh, on the candidate. So again, due to concerns from COVID-19, we thought that might be uh, a little less uh, confusing. Uh, our candidate is in his mid-40s. Uh, he has three school-aged children. And on June 7th and the 14th, there will be a picture and a bio in the bulletin. So if you will continue to pray for God's will to be done. Thank you. And I do encourage you to pray. Seek God's leadership and guidance. I know this is a little bit different, but these are different times. And we've just got to all be able to make an adjustment and to make those the changes that need to be made. So you continue to pray, let God guide you and direct you as we move forward. I don't know of any other announcements that need to be made. Continue to remember those that are sick in our church family. Lift them up to the Lord. And Brother Alan's going to come and lead us as we continue to sing together. I do want to remind you also this Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock we'll have choir practice here in the uh, worship center and uh, if we have to use the uh, pews in the congregation we'll do that but we have plenty of room even though we social distance if you saw us this morning uh, in the choir loft uh, we're making room there but we have plenty of room out on the platform here and even uh, in the area in front of the uh, podium so uh, I encourage all of our choir members to come on Wednesday evening at seven o'clock let's continue to sing through it all
you for joining singing with us this evening, Brother Dave. Thank you, Brother Allen and Choir and Jane for blessing our hearts in music. And I really appreciate Brother Allen. I want to tell you, it is so hard to lead music when there's nobody here. And he's been so faithful to do that and made the song service a joy. And I do appreciate all the work and time that he's put into that uh, these past few weeks. And uh, remember, next Sunday is Memorial Day. And uh, please keep that in mind as well. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to John chapter 7. And I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, I want you to think about a couple of things with me, if you would, um, about our lives. We've been looking at a life that matches Jesus. It's going to be conformed to his image, to be like Jesus. Well, today, I want you to think about receiving the truth, receiving God's word. In John chapter uh, four, uh, six, excuse me, John chapter seven and verse sixteen, Jesus answered them and said, "My doctrine is not mine, but His that sent me." Now I want you to realize that the word doctrine means teaching. That's what that word means. And in the Greek, Jesus is telling these that the teachings that He was giving were not His teachings, but they were of the Father. They were by the one who sent him. So Jesus received the teaching of the Father. His heart was open to receive that teaching. Now I want you to take your Bible and turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. Paul's writing to the church at Thessalonica, and he says this, For this cause also we, we also thank we God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Now notice, Paul says that the church of Thessalonica, he was so thankful that they received the word of God. So I want you to think with me tonight about receiving God's word. Taking God's word into your life. If you're going to be like Jesus, he took in what the Father taught him. He, he, he taught the teachings of the Father. Paul said that the church at Thessalonica had received, they had taken in the word. So that's what we're going to think about. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for this great privilege to be in your house and to worship you and to wherever we are, at home, in our cars, or uh, outside on the patio, wherever it is, God, that we can gather together and look at your word and I'll take it and apply it to our lives. And I pray that you will open our hearts and that we would receive the truth of your word. And Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. I think the big question for us to ask ourselves, I want to be like Jesus. How do you take God's word? How do you receive God's word? That's a great question for us to ask in our lives and really and truly to realize that the Bible is our source in this world and there's nothing more truthful than the word of God. We can't emphasize this enough today because the world we live in wants us to turn our back on the word of God. They want us to compromise God's word but we need to receive God's word. We need to take it in and realize that it's when you take the word of God in that a change begins to take place in our lives. And Christ spoke for the glory of God and he wanted men to be stirred in their lives to the truth of the word of God. Well, let me begin tonight by asking you, what causes us to struggle in receiving God's word? Why do we have a hard time really taking the Word of God into our lives? I think there's several reasons. And I want to say the first one to you is our emotions. Sometimes we are so caught up with our emotions. You know what I'm saying? We have been told something, 
Somebody has told us this, my mom, my dad, somebody's told us something. And we read something in God's Word and it begins to challenge us. It begins to make us think about things. And it, you say, preacher, emotions don't do that. Sure they do. I'm amazed at the times that I've had people call me and ask me a biblical question. And they'll say, preacher, where is it found in the Bible? And one particular one, I've probably told you this before, but one particular one was, I had a lady call me. She said, where do you find it in the Bible that cleanliness is next to godliness? Well, being the great pastor that I thought I was, I uh, grabbed my concordance because I wanted to be sure. And I looked at her, or I talked to her on the phone, and I said, ma'am, that's not in the Bible. Oh, yes, it is, preacher. I don't know what Bible you're reading, but my mama said cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, <laughs> I could not win that argument. I told her I ended up by saying, if you find it, you bring it to me and let me see it. I'm still waiting for her to come to me and show it to me. But that's emotions. And sometimes we, 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 we're so emotional about things that we don't receive what God is is saying to us in our lives. I think one of the things that also happens to us is that we are slow to take God's word and receive it because it calls for change. And we're adverse to change. You know, if I were to ask you, when do you eat supper or dinner, whichever term you use, what time do you eat? I will guarantee you that most of you eat at about the same time every day. Well, what if we change that? Well, I don't like that. I've always eaten dinner at 5 o'clock. I don't want to eat at 7. I want to eat at 5. See, we, we don't like change. And so when we take the Word of God and it comes to receiving the Word of God, it calls for change in our life. And, and, and when we're going to receive it, there's something that's got to take place inside of us. And so that you and I begin to realize and, and understand that people don't want to, they struggle with God's Word because it calls for change. It calls for something different in their life. It's, you know, you no longer can be bitter. You no longer can be angry. It calls for a change to take place. And so people struggle with that change in life. I think there's another reason that people struggle, and that is that people take the Word of God and they believe it's going to put restraints on them. You know, it's going to restrain me. I can't. We've misunderstood. The Word of God is given to us to help us in our walk with God, to draw closer to Him, to know His will, and to live the lives that bring glory and honor to Him. It's not about restraining us. It's about helping us to live the way God wants us to live. You know, sure, I know there's things that say we don't do this and we don't do that. But that's not to restrain us. It's to help us. God doesn't want us to gossip. You know what gossip does to people? It destroys people. It destroys life. I don't know if you've seen the new app that's out or a new page. I, I don't know what it is. But if somebody has done damage to your reputation, you can go on this page uh, and they'll help you to get back your reputation. Well, God's just told us things that he wants us to know in life that won't hurt our reputation, won't hurt our testimonies in life. And so people say, I don't want that. That's, that's too legalistic. That's God. God's restraining me. I can't have the freedom. Listen, real freedom comes when you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. When you receive the truth of His Word, that's when you have real freedom in life. But I also think about this, that some people look at it and, and people don't want to admit they're wrong. See, we, we don't want to maybe receive God's Word because i got to admit I'm wrong. I was wrong in what I did. I was wrong in what I said. And, and sometimes it's hard for people to say, I'm wrong. You know that? You have a hard time admitting you're wrong? I think we all tend to do that. 
And so we receive God's word because of that issue. I think one of the things about it is, too, that the truth of God's word to some people is a reproach. And they, they, it turns them off. They don't like that God has called sin, sin. And he's called things that are uh, wrong, wrong. And it becomes a reproach. You, you, know, you can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me how I can do this or not do this. I think, too, the fact that sometimes people have unresolved conflict in their lives. All of these are issues that keep us from receiving the truth of God's Word. We need to have a heart to receive what God's Word says. Take your Bible and turn over to Luke, the 8th uh, eighth chapter. And I want you to look at something with me for just a moment. In the 8th chapter of Luke, in verse 4, Jesus talks in about a parable. And this parable was about the field, about ground. And most of the time people use this when they talk about the fact of salvation, how God's word comes. But I want you to think a little deeper with me about this parable. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it was withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath an ear, let him hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear. I want you to think about this for a moment. I know that this is used talking about people uh, receiving the gospel because we know the seed is the word of God and we know that the ground represents people. But let's talk about this as, as for believers for a moment. What kind of soil is your heart? You see, there are times that our hearts can be rocky soil. Do you know that? Sometimes our hearts can be good soil. You say, preacher, how can that be? Well, think of it this way. If you know and you read that God says we're not to have any bitterness in our hearts and you remain bitter at someone in life, have you received the word of God? No. It's fallen on that ground. It's stony and it's, it's not springing forward. It's, it's not coming up. You know, sometimes it may start out and you may not be bitter for a day or two, but then you kind of get back in that anger, being mad, being bitter about something. And it doesn't produce like it ought to. So that when we receive, if we're going to be like Jesus. We want to have a heart that is a good soil where it can take root and grow and, and mature and can bring forth the fruit that the Father would have it to bring forth. Think about your heart. Now, I know there's some issues. I, I know this. Let me, let me give you another example. Tithing. You want to make people upset? Talk about tithing. People get mad. Why? If you recognize that God owns everything, tithing is not an issue. But people will get angry. They've not received. They're on stony ground. Don't want to do that. You see, we've got to keep sure that our hearts are tender. We need to keep that soil tendered in our hearts so that when that seed's planted and God puts that thought into us, that it can germinate and grow and bring forth the fruit that God wants to bring forth. Think about this. You and I keeping our hearts in such good shape that when we know we're to love one another, man, we keeping our hearts in the good shape that they're supposed to be in, loving each other, caring for each other, then think about what happens in the church. Man, the love just spreads. It grows. It matures. There's more love. But if somebody becomes angry and somebody begins to sow discord among that love is soon choked out. So we need to be sure that we keep our hearts where they need to be. We want to be sure that we're keeping our, 
our soul so that we can receive God's word. I want to be like Jesus. And Jesus received the doctrine of Je Father who sent him. And that was teaching those disciples, that multitude of people. He was teaching them the word of God that he had received. And as you and I receive it, that we apply it to our lives. And we let it become more and more a part of us each and every day. We need to make sure that our hearts are receptive. How do we do that? How do I make sure that my heart's accepted? First of all, I need to always be giving a self-examination. Look at my own life. When God speaks and he shares something and shows me something, Look at my life. See if I am following it. See what's coming out of me. Look at ourselves. Let me think about this for a moment. Jesus taught that it's not what's on the outside of man that defiles him. It's what's on the inside, right? That's what he said. It's on the inside. What's on the inside? You looked on the inside lately? You took it a real good exam of your life, not your neighbor's life, not your wife's, wife's life, but your life. Look at it. If you're going to be like Jesus, you take the Word of God in. As Paul talked about to the church of Thessalonica, you received the Word and believed it, and it changed your life. Look at your own life. Examine yourself. The hardest thing I believe in life is to examine ourselves. It's so much easier to look at somebody else's life and be critical of that life. But I need to look at myself. Is the Word of God being received in my life to change and to transform my life, to make me what I ought to be in my life? Am I, always, am I too prideful? I think I'm always right. When you and I look at our lives and we think about this, and I think when it comes to change, to opening up to the, our hearts to the truth of God's Word, let's open our hearts. Lord, I want to receive your Word. Have you, ever, have you ever thought about praying before you begin your Bible study, your prayer time? Have you ever thought about praying, Lord, open my heart to truth? Open my heart to truth, your truth, not the truth of the world, not the truth of traditions, not the truth of, of what somebody else said, but the truth of what you said in your word. Open my heart. Now, I think maybe sometimes God's waiting on us to say, Lord, I want to open my heart. I want to open my heart to it. I don't want a closed heart. I want to learn more about you. I want to be more like you. You know, the, we sung that little song, Every Day with Jesus is Sweeter Than the Day Before. Why is it sweeter? Because you open your heart up more and more every day. And that's what we need to do when it comes to the Word of God. We're not stubborn. You know, I don't want to be stubborn. I want to be open. I want to be the clay in the potter's hand. Not stubborn. Not rebellious. Like so many people today... They want to be stubborn about the things of God. And they're, they're reluctant to take the Word of God and apply it to their lives. When you think about this, sometimes we, we, we're reluctant to receive that truth because it's going to be hard. Sometimes we think it's going to be hard if we receive God's Word. Well, it may call for a change in our life. But we need to have a heart that says, Lord, it's not that it's too hard. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like Christ. I want to be like Him. And I want my heart not to be hardened to the truth or, or to turn its back on the truth. Lord, I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to go and tell somebody I was wrong if, if I was wrong. And I'm willing, God, to do whatever it is that your word would tell me to do in life. I always think it's interesting that one of the things Jesus taught, you know, he said, if you come to the altar and you remember about not being right with your brother, what did he say do? Leave your tithe, leave your offering, 
Go make it right with your brother and then come back. Then come back. Some people say, man, that's too hard. I want to be able to be that person that would go and tell. I want to be able to come back and worship God because I've received the truth of God's Word. And I know that that's what it's going to take for me to be able to worship God. Not to just sit in a pew and pretend like I'm, I'm worshiping God. Not pretending like everything's okay when I know there's not, everything's not right. And so I want to come back and I want to open my heart to the truth. Even if it means there's something I have to do in my life. When I think about the truth of God's word and that it gives to us and, and to realize it really gives us confidence in our lives. When you and I receive the teaching of the Father, it gives us confidence. Not in ourselves, but in Him. In Him. Because His Word stands forever. His truth endures forever. And so that when we are taking God's Word in and the teachings of God's Word, we know that it's words that, that give us confidence in life. Because we're living the way God wants us to live. We're living as Jesus would have us to live. Confidence. Receiving God's word. You know, when Jesus was tempted, he quoted the word of God. It gave him what he needed to face the temptations of life. Just like you and I. Man, we need to receive the truth of God's word. I, I'm going to give you an example of something so simple so easy. You know, the Bible says to us in the Psalms, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Well, if you and I are receiving God's word, and when sin comes and, and we're confronted with sin, then we can begin to quote the scripture. We can take the truth of God's word, and we have with a confidence that God said that if we would hide his word in our heart, that we might not sin against him. So it gives us strength to battle the temptations that we need in life. But his word also gives to us guidance. Isn't it great to know that God's word is there to guide us and to nourish us? Why do I need it? Because there's going to be times in life that I need to be guided. I need to know the way. I've got the word of God. And if I've received God's word, if I've received the teachings of the truth of God's word, then I've got guidance in my life. But I've got food. I've got nourishment. It strengthens me. If you go to Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then he begins to talk about all the things that the shepherd gives. Grass. Why do sheep eat grass? Don't they need to be nourished? Sure they do. Why do they need water? They need nourishment. And our nourishment comes to us from the Word of God. Going back to what Jesus said, my teaching is not mine, but it's of the one who sent me. So that when you and I read the Word of God and we really dig into God's Word, we realize this is God speaking to us. And we want to have a heart that's open and receptive to receive the Word of God. God, change me. God, I don't want to be what I was 30 years ago. I don't want to be the person I was 60 years ago. I don't want to be the person I was five minutes ago. I want your Word in me, just like it was in Jesus. So if I'm going to be like Jesus, then I need to take the Word into my life and apply it each and every day. Take it, let it transform us, let it make us what he would have us to be, that we could be more like him. I love the fact when he talks about that you and I, man, would receive the word of God, believing God's word, holding on to God's word, just like Jesus did. When he was teaching, he did not doubt the word of God. He did not say, well, this is a hypothesis, this is something that's uh, temporary, he was giving eternal truths. And I want a heart like Jesus that's open 
to the eternal truths of God's Word. I don't want anything to come in the way of receiving that. Time from time, things do come in the way. We have our personal preferences. We have our own desires. But I want to tell you, we don't need to follow those things. We need to listen to the doctrine of Jesus. It wasn't his. It was from the Father. And the Father is speaking to you and me today. Let's remember that. Let's remember that when we take the word of God, we want to be open to the truth that we can discover new truths about God, that we can know more about God each and every day of our life. I look at the life of Abraham. Abraham was a man who grew in understanding the word of God. He understood He was called by God. And he left. Doing what God wanted him to do. But then when God made a promise about his heir, he struggled with that promise. He looked at things scientifically. His wife was too old. There was no way they could have a child. And you know what happened with the handmaid. But you also know that God fulfilled his word. And you remember that the time came that God said, I want you to take your son and go up on the mount and make a sacrifice. And he went, taking his son, put his son on the altar. He took God at his word. And I love what he said to his son. Now, I've often thought about this picture. Your son's on the altar. And he looks up at his dad and he says, Dad, where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide. And about that time, there was a lamb that was caught in the bushes. Receive God's word. It impacts your life. It changes you. That you can be more like Christ every day of your life and everything that you do, that you can be more like Him. Begin your prayer time. Begin your Bible study time by saying, Lord, open my heart to the truth, your truth. Lord, teach me something new today. Teach me something. Show me something new that will draw me closer to you. Let's pray together. Father, as we gather here, we thank you for this opportunity to think about that your son came to teach your word. Not his own, but your word. And I pray, God, that we would realize that if we're going to be more like you, we need to learn your word. We need to know your word. If we want to be more like Jesus, conform to the image, then that word's got to live in us, to be alive in us. As Paul told Timothy, all scriptures are profitable. Every word, every dot, every period is precious. And Lord, help us all to begin to pray, asking you to teach us new truths about you. Remind us of old truths that maybe we forget and need to be reminded of. But help us to always be a heart where your word can grow and germinate and bring forth the fruit that you would have it to bring forth. Lord, be with us through this week. Guide us, direct us, and bring us back at the appointed hour. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. And thank you for watching and being a part of our evening service.